Welcome to FMSP Online Revision. This session is for OCR FP2 and the topic we're going to be looking at is rational functions and their graphs. So we'll start by looking at the specifications for rational functions and then we'll work through some exam questions to highlight the main points and help you get as many marks as possible when it comes to the exam. So part A in the specifications so this really follows on from work that you did at A2 core. So we've got more work to do with partial fractions because we can now include the denominator, which may be of the form x squared plus a squared, which we didn't have in A2 core C4. Uh, and we also can have the degree of the numerator may exceed the degree of the denominator. So as I say, that is just extending partial fraction work that you did from core maths. Then in part B, we've got to determine the salient features, the important features of the graph of a rational, rational function for which the numerator and denominator are of degree at most two, and including in particular the behavior of the asymptotes and that can be oblique asymptotes as well as asymptotes parallel to the x and y axes. And we've also got to be able to understand about the restrictions on values taken by the function. And then in part c, understand and use the relationship between the graphs of y equals f of x and y squared equals f of x. So we'll start by having a look at a question on partial fractions. So the first part is to express this in terms of partial fractions. So if you notice the factors in the denominator, so you've got two linear factors as you might have at A2 core and then we've got a quadratic one. This is the one that we haven't used previously before FP2. And then in part two we've got to show that the integral of 4 over 1 minus x to the power of 4 between these limits is given by this expression. Now it is important that you see of course that if you multiply out these brackets in part 1 you would actually get 1 minus x to the power of 4. So it is important to see the connection between parts 1 and part 2. So we'll start by doing the partial fractions and the first thing I've done here is to realize that you need to split up the one single fraction on the left into three single fractions. So it's a over 1 minus x and b over 1 plus x, similar to what you've done before. And then when we have this factor of 1 plus x squared in the denominator, we need to have a cx plus d in the numerator. And if we take a common denominator on the right hand side and add these fractions, then of course it will be the same as the common denominator on the left hand side, so I haven't written it in. And the numerator now will be uh, the 1 plus x and the 1 plus x squared times a, uh, and the 1 minus x and 1 plus x squared times b, and then of course the 1 minus x and the 1 plus x times cx plus d. So hopefully you'll be able to get to that stage. Uh, we then have got different ways in which we could find the values of a, b, c and d. You could multiply out the brackets uh, and equate coefficients, but I'm going to do it by um, a method which I hope you will have seen before. If you haven't, you might. you can always use your own method or you might like this one. But if I take particular values of x, for example, if I take x equals minus 1, then this term is going to disappear, and so is this term. So the only term we're left with is this one in the middle, and that only involves one constant, b. And that enables me to find b. So on the left we've got a 4, and on the right we will have uh, 2 and another 2, so 4b. So that gives us immediately our value of b. And you might have noticed at that stage that there is of course another value, I could have used this one first of all, that if I take the value x equals 1 then this one will disappear, so all of that term, 
and this will be 0, so all of that will disappear and we'll be left with 4 equals 4a. So a is equal to 1. Now, unfortunately, there are no other values that will make uh, terms disappear, but, so I am now going to just take uh, a couple of sort of fairly easy values of x. So the first and probably easiest one would be to take x equals naught. So on the left, we've still got 4, and on the right, we'll have 1a in the first, and we'll have 1b in the second term, and we'll have no c's, but we'll have 1d. And of course, because we already know the value of a and b, that now tells us that d is equal to 2. And the next value that I'm going to take, because I think it's probably going to be the next easiest one to work out, is when x equals 2. So if x equals 2, again, the left-hand side will be 4. We'll have 15a. We'll have minus 5b minus 3c, minus 3d. And because, again, we now know the value of a is 1, and b is 1, and d is 2, we can put all that information in, and you can just check that, of course, c will be equal to 0. So in terms of our partial, partial fractions now, we now know that 4 over... 1 minus x upon 1 plus x upon 1 plus x squared will be equivalent to 1 over 1 minus x plus 1 over 1 plus x plus 2 over 1 plus x squared. And we have our partial fractions. There were five marks to that question. There was a mark for splitting up into three fractions and getting your numerator, another mark. And then there were two marks for finding your values of A, B and C and D and an accuracy mark for fitting them all in correctly. So if we look at the second part of the question now, which is where we're asked to integrate, so, as I say, it is important that you see the connection between these two parts uh, and see that, of course, 1 minus x upon 1 plus x would be 1 minus x squared, and then times 1 plus x squared, that gives us our 1 minus x to the fourth. So, we're going to use this answer to actually integrate. So, I'm going to integrate now. Um, so we integrate 1 over 1 minus x, we get minus log of 1 minus x. We integrate 1 over 1 plus x, it's plus. And this is the bit that you haven't necessarily done before, so just be aware that this is in your formula books. When you want to integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared, it's the inverse tan of x, and we've got two of those, so it's 2 tan to the minus 1 of x, and the limits are between 0 and 1 over root 3. I'm going to simplify those logs first of all, so that um, I can write that as log of 1 plus x over 1 minus x, plus 2 tan to the minus 1 of x. Now none of these expressions in the numerator and denominator here are going to be negative, so I haven't put in modulus signs. So you will know, of course, sometimes when we're integrating involving logs, we need modulus signs, but these are all going to be positive, so I can get away with that. Uh, and again, we're evaluating between 0 and 1 over root 3. So let's do that. So for the first one, it's going to be log of 1 plus 1 over root 3 over 1 minus 1 over root 3 plus 2 times the angle whose tan is 1 over root 3. Now, hopefully, you remember that the tan of root pi over, sorry, the tan of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3, 30 degrees. We've got two of those, so it's going to be two lots of pi over 6, so that's pi over 3. 
And then when we evaluate when x equals naught, you would end up with the log of 1, which is nothing, and the tan of nothing is also nothing. So that bit is nothing. And the last bit, and again, you can see from what we're given here and we're trying to get, is that you just need to multiply the top and bottom line of your numerator and denominator by root 3 to get it in the form that we want. So four marks for that. So we get two marks at this stage for being able to integrate, attempting correct integrals and getting them right. We then get a mark for evaluating at this sort of stage and an accuracy mark for getting the correct result. So that is the question which sort of covers part A of the specification. What we're going to do now is look at a question which uh, it tries to cover part B. So we have a curve y equals x squared minus 6x minus 5 over x minus 2. First thing we're asked to do is to find the equation of the asymptotes and secondly we're asked to show that y can take all real values. So part one, the asymptotes first of all. Now hopefully uh, most of you will be able to write down immediately that since uh, the denominator would be 0 if x was equal to 2, then that tells us that x equals 2 is an asymptote. And then the other asymptote we're going to get by doing a little bit of division here. Well, I would use long division. You may do it slightly differently but I'll leave that up to you. But I'm, this is the method that I think is probably going to be the most common. So if we do a bit of division, so x into x squared will go x times and we'll get x squared minus 4x. Simplify that and we'll get, um, sorry, that's a 2. We'll get uh, minus 4x. Bring down the minus 5 x into minus 4x will go minus 4 times, so that's minus 4x plus 8. So we have a remainder of minus 13. So that means that we can write this equation up here. We can write it as y equals x minus 4 minus 13 over x minus 2. And that means that y equals x minus 4 is an asymptote. And it's an oblique asymptote. So there were two marks for that oblique asymptote and one mark for x equals 2. And if we look at the second part of that question, then the second part says that we've to show that y can take all real values. Now again, there are different ways in which you could do this. You could use it by differentiation, but I'm going to take the method which again I think is going to be most common. So I'm going to write it in the form y upon x minus 2 equals x squared minus 6x minus 5. And I'm going to rearrange it now as a quadratic in x. So I'll have x squared plus minus 6 minus y, lots of x, and a minus 5 plus 2y. So just uh, check carefully that you move terms around correctly and get the right sign. So what we're saying now is that x is real if b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to naught. So that is a result that we know from our core maths that for the quadratic equation to have real values then b squared minus 4ac must be equal to naught. So if I work out b squared minus 4ac, so we're squaring it so we can ignore those negative signs, 
So 6 plus y all squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2y minus 5. So that will be 36 plus 12y plus y squared minus 8y plus 20. Now if I bring my y squareds and my y terms together, what have I got? I get y squared plus 4y plus 56. Now we're wanting to show that that is always greater than or equal to naught, and probably the easiest way to do that is to write it in completed square form. So since we have a 4y here, I'm putting a 2 inside my bracket. That would give us y squared plus 4y plus 4. So I now need to add on another 52. So of course this is always positive and 52 is positive and that is greater than or equal to naught for all y. So basically we are saying that the quadratic equation has real solutions for all values of y. So that means for every value of y there is a corresponding value of x satisfying the equation of the graph. So that means that y takes all real values. Now there were four marks for that question. One mark for writing a, a quadratic in x and one mark for using the fact that b squared minus 4ac is equal to naught, and then you got two accuracy marks for coming to the correct conclusion and again showing this is always greater than or equal to naught. So we'll look now at the last question of this session which is going to be um, concerned mainly with the third part in our specifications because here we're going to be sketching the curve of y squared equals ax plus b over x plus c. So we're given a curve and its equation. We're told the asymptotes x equals minus 1, y equals minus 2. We're also told it passes through the point 3 naught and we're asked to find the values of a, b and c and then using these values we've got to sketch the graph of y squared equals f of x and state the coordinates of any points where the curve crosses the axes and give the equations of any asymptotes. So let's start with the first part. So y equals ax plus b over x plus c so the first thing, we're told that x equals minus 1 is an asymptote. So that implies, oops, that implies that c must be equal to 1. So that we have x plus 1 in the denominator and that would become 0 if x is equal to minus 1 and therefore an asymptote. Uh, we're told that y equals minus 2 is an asymptote. Now that also gives us information and that tells us that if we were to try and divide x into this ax we get minus 2. So that tells us that a must be equal to minus 2. And then the last bit of information we're given is that it crosses the x-axis at 3 naught. So uh, when x equals 3, y equals naught. So if we substitute that in, so we get naught equals, and of course we don't need to worry about the denominator here because the only way that y can be 0 is for the numerator to be 0. And that of course is negative 2 times x is 3 plus b, so b must be equal to 6. 
So there were three marks for that question, so there was literally one for each. So one for C equals one, one for A equals minus two, and one for B equals six. And we're now going to look at part two, where we're asked to sketch this graph. So it's now, because we know the values of A, B, and C, we know that we're going to sketch the graph of y squared equals minus 2x plus 6 over x plus 1. In other words, we want to sketch y equals plus or minus the square root of all of that. So a number of things to notice when you are sketching the graph of y squared. For a start, this cannot be negative because we can't take the square roots of negative numbers, so we are immediately able to rule out all of this underneath the x-axis, so all of that disappears. We can see from here that x equals minus 1 would still make this expression 0, so x equals minus 1 is still going to be an asymptote, just as it was over here. And also, if we put in x equal naught, in other words, on the y-axis, then if x equals naught, then we would have y equals uh, plus or minus root 6. So we can get a bit of information before we actually start sketching. So what that means then, in terms of a sketch, if we did it here, was that we would have... Um, our curve coming down here, but instead of crossing at 6, it's crossing at root 6, so quite a lot less down here. It's then going to come here. Now, it isn't so important in this case, but remember that the graph of y equals f of x and y squared equals f of x intersect at naught, y equals naught and y equals 1, which means the graph is the graph of y squared is below the graph of y up here, but then when y is equal to 1, the graph will become above it, so maybe here somewhere. And then, again, it's also just remember, worth remembering that if you were to differentiate to find dy by dx, say we did it implicitly, so you'd get 2y dy by dx, then if you if you then divide by the y to get an expression for dy by dx, so 2y dy by dx equals, and we have the derivative over here, then of course dividing by y, if y is equal to naught, as it is on the x-axis, then your tangent would be vertical. So that is another important feature of our graph. So we're going to try sketching it. So remember what we said, so it's going to come down here, it's going to cross the y-axis at root 6, it's going to come down here, and there where x equals 3, we want to try and make it look as though it is actually, it would have a vertical tangent. And then because we're drawing the graph, that's the graph of y equals plus the square root, but then of course we want to have the minus bit, then what we need to do is we need to reflect it. And they should of course look the same, but don't be too hard on yourself, or me for that matter, <laughs> if they're not. Uh, you are just getting your best attempt. And I think as long as we've got the important features. Now that, as I say, will be our graph. Um, the one thing I would just say, if you look, this is the nice, neat and tidy graph. So that's how it sort of would look, but I don't, as I say, be too hard with yourself. So uh, it said state any of the points where the curve crosses the axes. So, if you just remember, we had these two points here, so this was root 6 and minus root 6. So, the points where it crossed the axes were 0 plus or minus root 6, and then obviously 3 naught 
on the x-axis and give the equations of any asymptotes. Well, of course, it was x equals minus 1. So in terms of marks, you actually got one mark for each of these and one mark for your sketch. So that's what I'm saying. Don't be too hard on your sketch. It's a matter of getting the important features. So I'm going to stop this session here and just remind you, as always, uh, lots of practice uh, is the best way to revise your maths. And in particular, you know, when you're trying to sketch these graphs of rational functions, do get plenty of practice.